The question of should you go to university is a very big one to ask you and I realise that. I was in the exact same boat four years ago when I applied to go to university, so I understand the many questions and fears that you're facing. I've made content on this very channel about my experience at university. I went to Falmouth University in Cornwall and I studied film. This video won't be about Falmouth University itself, nor will it be about film, but it'll just be about university as a whole, trying to offer my experience as a graduate. That being said, if you are interested in Falmouth University content, do subscribe because I will be making some more videos videos in the coming months. I know that before I moved to uni, hearing about it from other students on YouTube was a big factor about helping me decide which university to go to. So to help you out, I'm going to break this video into three different parts. University culture, career paths and debt, breaking the norm. If you want to skip to a different part of the video, there will be chapters down below. Feel free to pick and choose whichever bits you want to watch, or just watch the entire thing, because that would help me greatly. Now, of course, everything that I'm about to say in this video is my own personal opinion. I'm not associated with any university or governing body, I'm just someone who went to university and I'm now done with it, just trying to give my advice to people on the internet. If I don't talk about a certain part of university and you'd like me to cover it, then let me know down below, or you can message me over on my Instagram. So I wanted to talk about university culture first. The reason why I have put this category first is because I realised that a lot of people who are moving to university this is the reason that you're going. A large part of studying at university, as opposed to just getting a job in that career, or whatever it may be, is the culture. In my video last week, where I spoke about remote working, I addressed how remote learning has been difficult for people to transition to. Remote learning at university, logging into Teams calls, and attending seminars and lectures virtually is not what people have signed up for, and there has been mass outrage across the country. The university culture is what you is what you go for. You go to sit in that room full of people and just soak up the atmosphere because that is how you best meet people. I am in the very narrow group of people who started out university and yeah, that's not good enough. I realised that footage was extremely grainy because I was losing sunlight because it's currently still technically winter in the UK and it gets dark at about half four which is depressing. So as I was saying, I am part of this very unique group who started out university in the traditional sense and ended it during a pandemic. Obviously there are some people who are starting university in the pandemic. The pandemic is still ongoing and there are people who will be going to university. So their experience will be completely different to mine. But I do have experience with virtual learning because my entire second half of my second year and my entire third year project was done virtually, which isn't easy when you study film. The one thing that's wonderful about university is that period of time, that three, four years, is like its own subculture. It's this little pocket of time where you can mess up. You can afford to mess up for three years. Like, how brilliant is that? You can use that time to meet new people and learn things about yourself and the world and sure, you know, actually go to your lectures and seminars. I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying don't go to lectures, but you can, you can, you can spend a lot of time just figuring out about what you want to do and who you are. And if you leave university, more clueless than when you started, it doesn't matter. I have graduated knowing that I don't want to work in the film industry, but I have a degree in film. So there's that for you. The other side to that is clubbing. So I'm going to make that sort of a, a, a part B of university culture, I guess. Now, clubbing at university shouldn't be the only thing that appeals to you, but you should consider it. I don't like clubbing, I've mentioned that before, both on here and on my TikTok. Clubbing isn't for me, I don't enjoy it, I would much rather go to a pub and actually just talk to my friends. I have been to clubs and it is a part of university. I don't regret going by any means, I don't regret going clubbing. Now of course when I say university culture I don't just mean clubbing. Clubbing is just a very big part of that culture. University culture can include anything. It's the literal society and feeling that you get by being at university because it is such a unique time and experience. So when I personally say university culture, I want you to ask yourself the following questions. Firstly, do I think I'm ready to live with other people? Do I want to live with other people? Do I like this particular university or do I like the area? Because those are two very different questions. Let's take myself as an example. Four years ago I was applying for university and I was applying for acting degrees to begin with and then I quickly switched to film. There are many acting and film universities in the country that I could have gone to but I chose to go to Falmouth. Why? The simple answer is I liked the university. I genuinely liked the experience. That is arguably the entire point 
of open days. So normally I would encourage you to attend as many open days as you can, but that might not be entirely possible in a world of COVID. I don't really know how open days are working anymore. Virtual open days obviously give you some idea as to what a place is like, but much like viewing a house virtually, you have no idea what it's gonna be like living in that house until, until you've moved in, until you're actually there. So virtual tours, I think, are a good place to start, along with YouTube videos. Try and find YouTube videos of the university campus and area that you're wanting to move to. And if you think that's not entirely possible for you, then start just going on Google. Go on Google Maps and just look at the wider area around your university. So many students, or pre-university students, I guess, focus so much on the university campus. Now, obviously you should look at the campus. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't, but look at the wider area. Look at the bars and the pubs and the cafes and the parks and the attractions that that place has to offer. When you are moving to university, you are fundamentally becoming a citizen of that area. When I moved to Falmouth, I essentially became a Falmouth resident for three years. Sure, I was a student, but I also lived in that town. I contributed to the ecosystem and you know what I'm saying, don't you? You're probably already doing all of this, so I don't wanna shove it down your throat any more than I already have, but I just feel like it's very important to figure out if the university culture is the main reason why you're going. Because any good university experience is both the degree and the experience itself. I think if you wanna succeed and have a successful time at university, you need to achieve and tick both of those boxes. So find a university that ticks them both for you as best as it can. Career paths and debt. Two very interesting topics that are definitely gonna help my average view duration. <laughs> of course, when you go to university, you have to hope that there is a relevant job to the degree at the end of it. Nobody wants to have wasted three years and be in nearly 30,000 pounds worth of debt to end up working in a job that they hate. Unfortunately, that is the realistic end result for a lot of postgraduates. I made a video last year called Post-Graduation Depression. I will link it up above because I talk about a relevant topic and feeling that a lot of graduates feel when they finish university. This sudden realization that you might not get the job that you want after you leave university is a very daunting and scary one, and I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, sure, there are some people who do get relevant jobs straight out the gate the second they have finished university. Some of the very people that I have studied film with for the last three years have ended up as film runners, as script consultants, assistant directors, camera trainees, and more. There are also people that I know who ended up working in bars and restaurants and other jobs that they don't necessarily want to be in. When I graduated, that basically was my expectation. I thought I was just gonna work in a bar for a year. And to be honest, I was content with that. But I got very lucky that I found a content writing position about three or four months after I graduated. Now, of course, film and content writing don't go hand in hand, but there are crossovers between the two. And I definitely wouldn't have got this position without my degree because th there was a lot of relevant experience that I was able to bring from studying film. A few weeks ago, I got a letter in the post about my student debt and it, it was scary. <laughs> I can reveal that I am in a lot of debt. A lot. It's easy to joke about these things because I am 22 and I am tens of thousands of pounds in debt, which is quite a serious thing to say. But when you look at the statistics, the UK government has expected that only 25% of current undergraduates are going to pay back their student loan in full. This is a staggeringly low number considering the amount of students that there are. So if you think about yourself, you have a 75% chance that you will probably never pay your student loan back and then it's just cut off. Now I'm currently not actually earning enough to pay any of my student loan back and I doubt that I will be earning enough for a very long time. If I ever do, I'm not overly concerned about it because it's such a small percentage that is taken from your paycheck every single month. If I do end up earning enough money to start paying back my loan, I will make a video about my experience if you're interested in that, so subscribe. So if you're concerned about the student debt at the end of your university degree, then don't let that deter you from at least trying. If you go to university and you do one year worth of studying, then you have still tried. You can back out at any point. Sure, you will still have one year's worth of debt to pay back, but that's better than three in realizing that university isn't for you. Because you know what? University isn't for everyone. What do I mean by breaking the norm? The majority of young people go to university to the point that it has become incredibly normal. If you don't go to university, you have to explain to people why. You have to provide a long list of reasons and you almost have to have your entire next few years mapped out, which is ludicrous to ask an 18, 19 year old. So although I will happily sit here and spout the benefits of university to you for 10 minutes, 
I'm also very open with the fact that it is not for everyone and I do not believe that everybody should go. It was never even my own intention to go to university. I was gonna do something else. I had no idea what I was gonna do when I finished school. That's the exact reason why I've titled this video Should You Go To University and not You Should Go To University. Unfortunately, a lot of people are pressured into going into university from their parents, from their grandparents, siblings, partners, whatever it may be, the societal norms are telling you that you should go. Now, I don't know your situation and I'm not going to pretend to, but don't feel like you have to go to university just because other people are telling you that you have to. Of course, the flip side to that is if you don't know what to do with yourself for the next three or four years, go to university. It is a great experience where you can actually find out about yourself in a setting that isn't your hometown. A lot of people will tell you that you shouldn't go to university if you don't have this deep-rooted passion and fire burning within you. I firmly disagree. I think you should go to university if you don't know what to do. If you have made that decision yourself, if you think that you might find better options at university, then go. A lot of people use university as a way of getting away from home as well, for people who are stuck in situations and scenarios that they don't want to be in, where they don't feel comfortable. And that is also very true. You will find your people at university. If you have spent a large portion of your life feeling out of place and feeling that the people around you don't really get you, then that will significantly change at university. It's very cliche, but think of your hometown as a small pond. You know all the fish in that pond. You have grown up with them. But when you move to university, you move to a much bigger pond. These are all new fish. You don't know who they are. And you have a chance to meet and mingle and chat and experience new things that you never would have experienced otherwise. So should you go to university? Can I answer that question for you? No. No, I can't. It is unfortunately a question that you do have to answer for yourself. You do have to try and just find out. One of the greatest problems with the human experience is that we never know what the other option would have panned out like. If I had never gone to university, I don't know what would have happened to me. I could have had some of the best years of my life or I could be dead in a gutter by now. I know that's extreme, but I literally have no idea. And neither do you. Until you try one of the options, you, you have no idea what's gonna happen. Now sure, getting into university isn't as easy as I may be making it sound because you still have to apply and you still have to get in. But if you can get a place, at a university that you like, and you like the area, and you like the culture, and you're, you're aware of the risks that you are taking, then you might have an absolutely fantastic time. Of course, your university years aren't guaranteed to be the best years of your life, and I don't think people should go into university with that expectation. But that is an entirely different video that I will happily make one day if you're interested. If you would like more information about university, specifically Falmouth University, then I will link a video on the end screen for you to click on. But until then, thank you very much for watching and I will talk to you next week. Bye bye.